Good evening and thanks for keeping a date with us on the program Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria, a program sponsored by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development to showcase the richness of the Nigeria agricultural sector and efforts of government and other relevant stakeholders to develop the sector. In our previous episode, we showcased the impact of farmers' cooperative societies and other associations in crop production. However, agricultural transformation goes beyond production. It involves processing and marketing. On this episode, we are showcasing the impact of some agro-processing companies in Nigeria and the effort of government to support the companies. But before then, let's take news of the activities in the diary of the ministry. I am your regular guide, Gabriel Ojile. Keep watching. ...that will provide the necessary policy direction that will truly position agriculture as the mainstay of our economy. The federal government is removing obstacles and offering opportunities for self-employment, wealth creation and food security in the Nigeria's agricultural sector. Think farming, think agriculture. Watch Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. Showing on NTA Fridays at 8.30 p.m. In our diary tonight, Agri-Ministry gets new standard operating procedure just as efforts are on the way to make tractors available to farmers. These and other stories will come your way shortly. In an effort to ensure efficiency in operation and digitalization of the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, the Honorable Minister Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar recently received a newly developed standard operating procedure, SOP, for adoption. We demanded to digitalize... Speaking at the handover ceremony, the Minister appreciated the effort of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Fala Shadeyemi, for the laudable reforms in the civil service. Abubakar urged staff to adapt to the digitalization of the Ministry's activities for effective service delivery. The adoption of these SOPs will significantly bring about an effective system of service delivery, not only in the ministry, but service-wide. I therefore urge all the respective directors, heads of departments, and their champions, who are the owners of this document, to ensure that the full operationalization of the SO developed SOPs align with the ministry's mandate and vision and thus leading to the transition of its work processes to meet the demand in an increasingly technologically driven world in accordance with civil service reforms. At this juncture, it is my honor and privilege to encourage workers to show more commitment in driving this initiative for continued service delivery. Speaking before the handover, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, N.S. Afolabi Omahihi, stated that the standard operative procedure has been designed to ensure digitalization and information sharing in the Ministry for effective collaboration. Omahihi directed the Human Resources Management Department to collaborate with the Office of the Head of Civil Service for training of departmental champions for effective implementation of the SOP. It is not far-fetched that the developed SOPs would act as a complete guide for staff work processes. And it is also an aspect of the enterprise content management with the mandate to digitize ministry's record and automate workflow to achieve the overall improvement in information sharing and collaboration across our agencies, institutes, and state office, offices as time goes on. It is my firm belief and hope that the implementation of SOPs will professionally boost the ministry's output and encourage all staff to give their best to the service of the nation and the ministry in particular. In a bid to enhance mechanization and increase food production in Nigeria, Tata Africa Services Nigeria Limited a company that specializes in the provision of tractor services to farmers in Nigeria recently approached the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development for partnership. While presenting the company's sustainable agricultural business model to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in Abuja, the country director, Agricultural and Construction Equipment Division, Chijo Okoli, stated that the company in recent times has trained 120 tractor operators and 80 technicians in Zaria and many others in other parts of the country to provide tractor services to farmers. Chijoke added that the company has been working to provide tractor services to both big and smallholder farmers in the country by dialing star 347 star 82 hash 
to assess the service of a tractor across the country. So basically, what we were looking at was a solution that would make sure that real time the farmers can actually make a request and get access to tractors from wherever they are in the country. That whole understanding with Agra led to the development of the framework. And last year we started with 25 tractors just to test run the market and see what it will cost. And surprisingly, with all the designs and uh, constraints that was built into the model, we found out that the new level of service providers that we created in the country successfully met with the terms of the engagement that was laid out before them. Reacting to the presentation, the Minister of State, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mustafa Baba Shehuri, stated that mechanization is the way to go in modern agricultural practices and that the ministry will work in collaboration with the company to provide tractor services to farmers in every nook and cranny of the country. Mustafa, however, added that the company needed to remove the service of middlemen in order to make the sustainable agricultural business model more effective and to avoid middlemen hijacking the services and make them too expensive for farmers to assess. Simplify the technology product that Every farmer, whatever he is in Nigeria, can access this thing directly, either to Jandia or to whatever you know uh, company that wants to come into this this avenue. So that you you, you remove you know the middleman. The National Gender Steering Committee for the implementation of the National Gender Policy on Agriculture recently paid a cursive call on the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development and the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry and solicited for continual support of the Ministry for Women in Agriculture. The committee was led by the Country Director, Action Aid Nigeria, NAOB, who gave the brief on the effort made so far by the committee and Action Aid and the need of the Ministry to support women farmers and people with special needs to assess agricultural credit facilities, insurance, proposal development, training, among others. We will continue to work with the stakeholders contributing a little bit, bridging the gender gaps in agriculture. Please, we have uh, some requests. Uh, we are asking that you invite all the country directors who are members of this, you know, uh, 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 members of uh, this committee, and those who are outside uh, country directors of INGOs and development partners working on agriculture to pick one or two objectives of the national gender policy to be able to work on it and anchor it on their own behalf. We want enhanced provision for the gender unit you know, of uh, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and the unit so that they are able to have something as related gender programs Reacting to the appeal made by the committee, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mahmoud Mahmoud Abubakar, assured the committee that the ministry would support the gender program to ensure that women farmers are adequately empowered to thrive in the agricultural value chain. The women should be carried along right from the concept, the design, all the way to the implementation of that policy or any project uh, for that matter. I, I believe the same thing with this. Um, in the uh, smallholder farmer, even here in Nigeria, we know a lot of women are into agriculture, subsistence agriculture. And I always say, uh, they are the first line of defense. Before you buy food from any big corporation, agricultural corporation, the first thing that you come across is the one that is being produced by the smallholder farmers and women uh, in particular. So I think uh, it's only fair and just to give you all the support that you need. And I can assure you of my own um, uh, support in this particular case. Also speaking, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Ernest Afolabi Omahe here, appreciated the Country Director Action Aid for providing leadership for the committee and creating awareness on gender-related issues and pledged the support of the Ministry to engage the service of consultancy firm to develop proposals for women farmers and also to organize training for people with special needs. I'm happy at the request made by made here on having a team or a consultancy firm to assist our women folk in, our, in preparing business proposals 
and negotiating for credit. It's very, very important. And after this meeting, we will I will look straight into that and draw terms of reference so that we can engage a consultancy outfit. No nation attains economic sustainability and food security by exporting its raw materials. It rather thrives better through production, processing, and marketing of value-added products. In our next segment, Records of the FDA, we are showcasing government's effort to enhance agro-processing in Nigeria and the activities of some small and medium-scale agro-processing companies in ginger, rice and other crop processing in Nigeria. Keep watching. Agricultural transformation involves three major chains, which include production, processing, and marketing of agricultural produce and products. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, in line with the drive of the present administration, has been working round the clock not only to ensure crop production, but also processing and value addition of the crops. One of such crops the government has given priority to is rice. The federal government embarked on the building of 10 large-scale rice mills across the country. The rice mills are in progress in Kwali Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory, Suleja in Niger State, Kaduna, Kanu, Jigawa, Adamawa, Bayelsa, and Ekiti States, among others. The projects upon completion will be handed over to the private sector on loan with a repayment plan of 15 years. Government is supporting rice processing on a large scale level and is part of creating business for people because the, the 10 mills is a PPP arrangement, private uh, uh, partnership uh, uh, program, which when completed will be handed over to investors, 10 investors that we continue to, uh, that we own the mills because it's on loan, but government is uh, assisting in establishment because of the cost intensiveness of the mills. The small-scale farmers have also been supported by the ministry to add value to the crops they produce. The support comes in form of processing facilities. They have given us a grinder that we will be able to process and add value to whatever we have farmed. And for us women, you know, we are happy with these small implements that we ourselves, we can operate boost our agricultural activity to just not provide food on our tables at home, but also to be able to export. You can see there is a sealer here that after our processing, we'll be able to seal and package properly that will meet international standards for our product. Aside assisting small and large scale processors with processing equipment, the ministry through the Bank of Agriculture BOA also actively supports the processing of agricultural crops into finished products by giving loans to processors. Mm, good finance. Awal Ibrahim is the Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Zimina Rice Processing Company in Kaduna. He is a loan beneficiary of the Bank of Agriculture. This intervention and the ban on importation of rice has helped him a great deal. BOA Bank of Agri tried in its own capacity at least, you know, insisted that we should build a relationship from scratch. And what they did, they said, okay, what we will now do for you, let us look at uh, your business. They visited, they came, they were also overwhelmed with what they saw and, you know, supported us in terms of working capital to increase the capacity of our raw materials and uh, from there we will say that you know that intervention alone you know gave us good mileage as we can 
cover some number of days without experiencing break in you know production the ministry of agriculture and rural development has also through the bank of agriculture supported the three brother rice mill in hadeja area of jigawa state with about 350 million naira during the takeoff of the rice mill company in 2015. This loan has impacted positively on this company as the company's production capacity as at the beginning was 120 tons per day. But with the benefits derived from the loan, the company can now boast of increased production per day. Today, we can tell you that we can, we can process finished finish rice more than 200 tons per day. So, and as we can see, new projects are coming up in which we hope in, in a couple of months we get over. This one is about 180 tons in 24 hours. So, together with the 200 we have, which we, it will give us around 360 to 400 tons. Aside those that have gotten the financial support of the federal government to enhance processing, there are others in their private capacities who have added value to agro-processing in Nigeria. One of such small-scale agro-processing companies is Farmline Food, a company that specializes in ginger processing. A factory tour with Kunle Agani, executive director and chief executive officer of Farmline Food, reveals that ginger tea and food spices can be produced. So what we are producing here is ginger with turmeric. We have taken the proper measurement of what we want. So now, from here now, we now send it. This is tea bag products. So we are producing tea bags here, yeah, of it. When it's properly mixed, they will now take it out. Another ginger processing company that is making great impact in the industrialization of ginger in Nigeria is Bido Commercials Limited, located behind Ginger House in Kwe community of Jaba local government area of Kaduna State. There are lots of machineries in this factory which are used for different purposes in ginger processing which include but not limited to ginger washing machine, slicing machine, drying machine, extractor machine, steaming machine, cooling machine, sealing machine, bottle washing machine, among others. All these machines are used for the production of different end products such as ginger powder, ginger juice, ginger instant tea, ginger split product, among others. This is our ginger juice already packaged, they have finished packaging it. What they are doing here now is just making it clean and then wrapping it. This is our instant ginger tea. This tea, Nigeria spend over 3 billion naira every year importing it. So we are struggling to stop that importation and if possible, export also. The program is transforming agriculture in Nigeria and we have been showcasing the efforts of government and private stakeholders in agro-processing in Nigeria. Aside the benefits of attaining food security through processing, other key benefits are wealth creation and employment generation. In our next segment, Partnership for Development, let us evaluate the impact these companies have made in employment generation through the processing of agricultural produce. Keep watching. Agriculture has the capacity to create jobs along its value chain. The processing companies such as Bido Commercials Limited, Farm Lime Food, Scroco International Limited, Zimina Rice, Three Brother Rice, and other smallholder farmers who are into processing have created outlets for job creation to many Nigerians. With the collaboration between the Bank of Agriculture and Zimina Rice, the company has indirectly employed 13 staff 
and other indirect beneficiaries. Company that A staff of the company speaks on the impact the company has made in his life alongside other staff. The salary has never a day maybe been held for some months or thereabouts. So, so well, we believe as we worked with him, so our financial aspect of life is not being delayed for any purpose. So we're hoping and to see the company growing together. Reducing unemployment, strengthening local production and processing are very central to the activities and operations of the Bank of Agriculture. Three Brother Rice, as a multi-million Nara Rice milling company, through its collaboration with the Bank of Agriculture, increased the production of rice in Hadeja area of Jigawa State and also providing direct and indirect jobs to hundreds of people who are engaged in milling and the marketing across the country. Initially, we started with staff of about, we have, initially we started with 50 staffs, but right now we have permanent staff, 150. The contract, contract staff, we have about 90. These are the ones that work directly with the company. The farmers are not included. The transporters are not included. Bido Commercials Limited and the Farm Live Food that are into ginger processing have also created jobs for citizens in their host communities. We grew up and saw our parents producing ginger. We inherited from them, our children are inheriting from us. And this is the first ginger processing factory in this community. That's the number one and most important benefit because we have added value to ginger chain here. I'm so happy to have started my career here. After my CVC, I was actually recommended to work here by someone who have worked it during my CVC. So I must say, family has actually helped my, has given me a lot of industrial experience. I've, it has helped my intelligent quotients how to relate to people, how to work with people, how to supervise people, how to organize a work function. It has actually assisted all in various ways like when it comes to finances. The smallholder farmers who have gotten processing equipment from the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development have also made great impact in engaging their family members and by extension other members of their communities. I process tomatoes a lot and everybody in my house is part of the process. He's either doing sorting, washing, grinding, boiling, or even the packaging. So there's nobody that, they, they don't even have time to go out. We are engaged in the house. So if every woman will engage her children, honestly, we will have a healthier society. Because nobody will go out and look for trouble. Everybody is doing what he or she knows how to do best for the benefit of the family and for the benefit of the community. Investing in the processing chain of the agricultural sector has great potentials for wealth and job creation. It is always rewarding for the nation. This is the much we can take on this episode. Thank you very much for investing your time with us. Join us again, same time, same station, next week for another interesting episode. I'm Gabriel Ojile. Have a great weekend and bye for now.